The thrilling story begins with a chubby man who, after finishing his work, is returning home. On the way, he stops at a spot to relieve himself, but then he notices strange radiations and waves emanating from the house in front of him. These waves look extremely dangerous, and all the items in the house are floating in the air. Frightened by these sights, the chubby man runs away from there. Now we are shown the inside of that house, where a professor named Joseph lives. Joseph is a very renowned and well-known scientist who mastered many aspects of physics at a very young age. In Joseph's room, all the objects are shown floating in a strange manner. After many years of hard work, Joseph has discovered through his experiments how to bring dead people back to life, and he is now testing his experiment. Next, we are shown a nearby museum where a very old and large egg is kept. But at the very next moment, the egg starts to crack mysteriously, revealing the large eyes of a creature peeking out from inside. After the egg breaks, a large flying dinosaur emerges from it, flies out of the museum, and heads towards the sky. Meanwhile, in a car on the street, we see a husband and wife enjoying themselves, but then the big dragon flies in and grabs their car, dropping it directly into the water. After this, the dangerous dragon heads towards the city. Now we are introduced to a man named Frank, who does odd jobs. Frank is deeply in love with his friend named Adele, but he doesn't know how to express his feelings to her. We see Frank writing a letter to Adele. Some time has passed, and now we see the same girl, Adele, who has come to a desert with her team. Adele is searching for the tomb of a great doctor in the desert pyramid. While traveling, the team encounters two men who live nearby. In reality, these two men are petty thieves, and they tell Adele that they have a map of all the pyramids. And if Adele gave them money in exchange, they would give her the map. Adele agreed immediately and began to take the two men with her inside the pyramid. Initially, everything appeared dark inside, but according to the map the two men had, they soon encountered a massive wall with no apparent way forward. Here, Adele and the others were puzzled about how to proceed. Suddenly, Adele approached the wall and pressed a stone, causing a large door to open automatically. Adele and her entire team entered the place, which was filled with gold jewelry and diamonds. Seeing all this, the two men went mad with greed and started touching and rolling over the gold as if it were their father's property. But Adele didn't focus on these things. She was looking at a very large coffin in front of her, which was the reason she had come there. Adele told her companions to open the coffin. A little later, when they looked inside, they found a mummy. Adele realized that this must be the mummy of the doctor, who was very famous in ancient times. Adele was only interested in this mummy. But what exactly would Adele do with this dead mummy? This would be revealed shortly. Now, those two men who were going crazy over the vast amounts of gold were cursed in a strange way. The golden jewelry they had worn around their necks came to life and started attacking them. One of them fell and was killed because the ground gave way beneath him. This was the result of their greed. Adele and her companions were fortunate not to have touched the golden items. Adele then said that they needed to get the mummy out of there as soon as possible. Unfortunately, it wasn't going to be that easy. A very wicked police officer, named Professor, arrived with his soldiers. Professor asked Adele what she was doing there. Adele replied that she was there to take the mummy from the coffin with her. Professor asked what she would do with a mummy that had been dead for so many years. Adele then revealed her true purpose. This mummy was of an ancient doctor who was very famous in his time. With whose help I want to cure my very sick sister. No normal doctor can cure her. Only this mummy can. But now Professor started laughing at Adele because this mummy is dead. How will Adele use it to cure her sister? Adele then explained that a scientist named Joseph would help her. Joseph, whom we saw at the beginning of the story, has the technology to bring dead people back to life. 
But Professor mentioned that Joseph is now very old and doubted whether he still had the strength to revive anyone. Professor then ordered his soldiers to capture Adele, but she wasn't about to let herself be imprisoned so easily. As the soldiers tried to catch her, she evaded them, grabbed the doctor's mummy's coffin, and escaped through an underwater passage. Now, Adele had the doctor's mummy, which she believed could cure her sick sister. Meanwhile, on the other side, the overweight man was being interrogated by police officers. They asked him what he saw that night. The man described seeing strange radiations and waves coming from a house, which were very peculiar. He also mentioned seeing a large dragon flying in the air. However, the police officers thought he was lying or perhaps drunk that night, which caused him to hallucinate. They even considered putting the man in jail. The officers discussed that news about the dragon should not spread in the city, as it would cause widespread panic and fear among the people. But the next day, what they feared came true. News about the dragon spread everywhere, somehow making it into the newspapers. Reports indicated that a huge flying dragon had been seen in the sky, which had already claimed several lives. We are then shown the museum caretaker from where the dragon had escaped. Frank, who worked with the caretaker, was also shown. They both kept looking at the broken part of the large egg, with the caretaker saying that perhaps something had emerged from this egg, and it might be the same dragon that broke through the roof and left. After a while, some police officers arrived at the scene to investigate. They asked the caretaker what he had found out about the egg. The caretaker and Frank explained that they had just started gathering information and would inform them as soon as they had concrete evidence. Now, we see Joseph at his home, calling out to someone in front of a window. Suddenly, the same dangerous and large dragon appeared at the window, seemingly obeying Joseph's every command. Joseph was feeding the dragon pieces of meat. In fact, it was Joseph who had brought the dragon to life from the egg, and somehow, Joseph and the dragon's souls were connected, which was very strange. Joseph kept feeding his pet dragon. Meanwhile, the incompetent police officers began to suspect Joseph and directly went to his house. Joseph hid his pet dragon in a cupboard. The police officers started investigating every corner of Joseph's room. One officer got very hungry and began eating eggs that were kept to the side. The pet dragon, watching everything from the cupboard, attacked the officers as soon as they started eating the eggs. The officers were terrified at the sudden appearance of such a big dragon. The dragon ate the eggs first and then wreaked havoc before flying away. Since the dragon was found in Joseph's house, the police officers concluded that Joseph was the culprit and arrested him. On the other side, we see Adol at the railway platform, who had brought the doctor's mummy's coffin from Egypt. Adol quickly took the mummy's coffin to her home. Adol was extremely happy, believing that now her sister would finally be cured. Adol's sister was sitting on a bed without any movement, indicating that she had been in a coma for many years. A hairpin had accidentally gotten stuck in her brain, and because of this, no doctor had been able to treat her, leaving her in a coma till this day. Adol was confident that with Joseph's help, she could revive the doctor's mummy and cure her sister. However, Frank arrived at Adol's front door with a letter for her. He was about to leave it there when Adol opened the door and invited him in. Feeling a bit shy, Adol asked what was in the letter, but her attention was suddenly drawn to a nearby newspaper. Reading it, Adol discovered that Joseph was soon to be executed. Adol was terrified because Joseph was the only person who knew the technique to revive the doctor's mummy, and if Joseph died, no one would be able to bring the mummy back to life. Therefore, Adol was determined to save Joseph at any cost. Adol first asked Frank where the executions were carried out. Frank gave her the address of the nearby police station. Adol immediately set out to save Joseph. Disguised as a lawyer, she went to meet Joseph. Adol told Joseph that she was there to rescue him. Upon her questioning, 
Joseph explained that he had used his technique to bring the dragon egg in the museum back to life. But Otto told him that she needed to cure her sister and had an ancient doctor's mummy that Joseph needed to revive. Joseph said that the task seemed difficult but not impossible. However, he needed to escape because he would be executed within a few hours. The police officers soon realized that the person disguised as a lawyer was Adol, who had entered to speak with Joseph. As a result, they caught Adol and threw her out. But Adol was not one to give up so easily. A little while later, she disguised herself as a food delivery woman and went back inside. The police officers recognized Adol once again. Adol kept changing her appearance repeatedly to save Joseph, but each time, the police officers recognized her and threw her out. Meanwhile, the police officers, with the help of a hunter, were tirelessly searching for the dragon, but even after scouring the entire city, they couldn't find it. Adol tried numerous things to free Joseph, and in the end, she managed to enter disguised as a police officer, giving her a chance to get inside the jail. Adol rushed to free Joseph, but when she arrived at his cell, she found another man there instead. She asked him where Joseph had gone, and the man replied that Joseph had been transferred to another jail a few hours earlier, where he was scheduled to be executed. Adol was extremely distressed, not knowing how to save Joseph. The man advised her to seek help from a high-ranking politician. An idea struck Adol, and she quickly got ready and went to see the president. Adol had a good relationship with the president, so she told him that she needed his urgent help to get Joseph out of jail. The president hesitated, saying he couldn't make a decision immediately and needed some time to think. At that moment, the same dangerous dragon flew in and was about to attack the president. Adol threw herself over the president to protect him, and the dragon flew away. The dragon attacked with such speed that no one saw it clearly. All they saw was Adol falling over the president. The security officers, thinking Adol was attacking the president, arrested her. Adol didn't get a chance to explain herself. The scene then shifts to the caretaker and Frank, who were in the garden behind their house, watching the dragon. The dragon always returned to the same spot after flying around. Frank was very pleased with the caretaker's efforts to keep the dragon well-fed with meat and fish, ensuring it would not harm others and would come directly to him. After spending several hours in jail, Adol returned home and apologized to her sister, feeling guilty for not being able to do anything to help her. To relieve some of her stress, Adol decided to take a bath. While bathing, she remembered a letter from Frank and opened it to read. In the letter, Frank mentioned that he had the large dragon that was roaming around the city and invited Adol to visit his house if she wanted to see it. Adol, eager to see the dragon, immediately went to Frank's house. In the garden, she saw the enormous, fearsome dragon. Initially, the dragon did not heed Adol's commands but gradually she managed to bring it under her control. Adol decided to use the dragon to rescue Joseph from jail. She set off immediately, riding the dragon in a dramatic fashion and successfully brought Joseph out of the prison. Upon reaching the garden, Joseph was overjoyed to see the caretaker and embraced him warmly. Joseph and the caretaker were old friends who had lost touch after university. Adol was also thrilled that Joseph had returned, as he would now be able to revive the doctor's mother and heal her sister. However, just then, the hunter who had been sent by the police officers to kill the dragon arrived at the scene. The hunter, hiding behind the bushes, shot the dragon in the heart with his gun. The dragon was severely wounded and could no longer move. The same pain was felt by Joseph because, as it was known, their souls were combined, meaning if the dragon died, Joseph would also die. Joseph's condition rapidly deteriorated. Adol quickly brought Joseph to her home and pleaded with him to revive the doctor's mother. Joseph instructed Adol to gather all the antique items in the house into a circle. 
Adol complied immediately, and Joseph began chanting his spells, making the items levitate. However, he became extremely fatigued and died in the midst of his incantations. With Joseph's death, the dragon also perished. Adol was devastated, realizing that the doctor's mother wouldn't be revived and that her sister might never recover. But within moments, it was revealed that the doctor's mother had indeed come back to life. She broke out of her coffin and, looking quite frightening, went to Adol's sister, who was still in a coma. The doctor's mother noticed a needle lodged in Adol's sister's brain and asked Adol about it. Adol explained that several years ago, while she and her sister were playing badminton, a shuttlecock hit her sister, causing a needle from her hair to enter her brain. Since then, her sister had been in a coma, unable to speak or eat. Adol asked the doctor's mother if she could cure her sister. The doctor's mother revealed that this case was extremely complicated and beyond the ability of even highly skilled doctors like herself to resolve. Adol was very upset by this news. However, the doctor's mother then explained that due to Joseph's spell, not only had she been revived, but all the other mummies within a 10-kilometer radius had also come back to life. She knew that in a nearby museum, there was a mummy of a king with even more experienced doctors. Adol, along with the doctor's mother, took her sister to the museum. Once inside, the doctor's mother opened all the coffins and all the mummies revived. When they finally opened the king's mummy coffin, the king's mummy expressed delight at being awake after so many years. The doctor's mother introduced Adol and explained her problem. Initially, the king's mummy and her army were reluctant to help Adol. However, when they learned that Adol had brought them back to life and that her only request was to save her sister, whom she loved dearly, the king's mummy became emotional. She ordered her experienced doctors to help Adol's sister. The mummies used ancient techniques to remove the needle from Adol's sister's brain. After a few hours, Adol's sister was fully recovered and could speak normally again. Adol was overwhelmed with joy and hugged her sister, tears of happiness in her eyes. With the mummy's mission accomplished, they went out to explore freely. Everything returned to normal, and Adol set sail on a ship named Titanic with her sister. As everyone knows, the Titanic's fate was well known, marking the end of this adventurous story.